Rogers. Woo. It's like deja vu. All right, here we go again. Whoa, all right. Oh, I was just here. Okay, uh, date and switch time settings. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK right now. Uh, we'll be starting this run in about 42 seconds. Why do we do that? It's like an Animal Crossing strategy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it all, really is. <laughs> all will be revealed very shortly. Uh, I love this game. So I get you to tell yes. me about Super Mario Odyssey. Super Mario Odyssey is an amazing speedrun. It's perfect in every way in that you have so many different movement options. And I've always been described that I think a, a great... Uh, tell for a good movement-based speedrun is all of your different movement options at any given point are optimal. So you're going to be seeing dangerous chain together, all sorts of single dump jumps, double jumps, triple jumps, rolling everywhere, roll canceling to then convert that m momentum into jumping and whatnot. It'll be great in three, two, one, go. All right. And lots of other cool movements. It'll be great. Oh, boy. Yeah. Like I said, 2018 was the last time we saw this at GDQ. And uh, we went out of bounds exactly zero times back then. For real? Um, yeah. Yes. That's funny. They had just found the clip, wooden right? clip, the nut clip, right there the day of the run. Oh, yeah. I remember but that now. But now here we are showing off all the 2023 strats. It's going to be hype. I think the world record has come down a whole seven minutes. Shoutouts to Tyrone18. Um, the Italian king of Super Mario Odyssey, uh, really just like taking this run to another level, um, really pushing the boundaries of this game. And he uh, did give me a couple of extra strategies that I was able to kind of sprinkle in here, and hopefully I'm able to do them justice um, here on the big stage. So the first kingdom we have is just Cap Kingdom. Um, no moons to collect here. This game is pretty linear. Um, there's not anything that you can do to like skip ahead of levels or, you know, anything like Super Mario 64 where you're, like, jumping ahead and, like, completely skipping entire areas of the game. you got to go through everything, and there is a minimum moon requirement for everything, so um, we do have to kind of respect that at the very least. Yeah, in this room right here, you're going to be seeing kind of the main gimmick of this game, the capture mechanic, where Danger's going to be grabbing this froggy so he can jump up really high. And if he throws in little shake jumps, you can have it do that little bigger jump in the air and go up a little bit higher. You're also seeing a little minor usage of, some, of tech called some vectoring, where if he falls at the ground at kind of a diagonal, he falls to it a little bit faster, gaining more velocity. And now he's going for left side. Oh. Just a little short, but that's okay. We just back it up like that. Nice backup. Uh, very well backed up, yeah. This boss will only be on the screen for just a second, so don't blink. <laughs> yep, he's half dead. And now he's dead, dead. Just like that. All right. Woo, good captain. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One down, 13 kingdoms to go. Things get a little bit bigger from here. We're going to be going into the Cascade Kingdom with one of the biggest tricks in the run right off the bat. Dan, do you want to talk a little bit about it? Uh, yeah, sure. So for the longest time, up until around 2019, I think it was, the Dino Skip was utilized in Cascade Kingdom to skip what we thought was straight up to the boss, but you did have to go through a couple of cutscenes to get there. And... More recently, in 2019, although that is like four years ago now, now that I think about it, <laughs> right? but uh, it was discovered that you didn't actually have to go to those cutscenes, and unlike uh, the name suggests, the dino skip did actually use the dino, but now we do actually skip the dino with dino skip skip. We're great at naming things. Uh, yeah, so you're going to see Dangers, as soon as he grabs his Power Moon, all of the uh, cutscenes are over. He is going to be turning around and going away from where the game is expecting you to go. There's this tiny piece. Uh, <laughs> I can hear the claps beginning already. This is what I love to see. There's, there's a tiny piece of collision directly on the wall. Uh, you need a very specific position and height setup to reach it, but if you reach it, you can jump and then use that to scale the whole wall. That's what I'm going to try and do. This is very precise. Ooh, a little low. I'll give it another try, though. That's all right. A little low again. It's OK. OK, one more try. And if it doesn't work, then we can just go the other way. That's fine. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll skip it. Basically, you just use that rock wall. Um, you can climb up it. Um, saves about 10 seconds from having to go over here, which is to say uh, using the dino skip. Um, but also something to mention, that, that little timer thing that we were doing at the beginning, 
Unfortunately, we will have to do a little bit of a manual version of it, but it won't lose us too much time at all. We'll explain that a little bit more when we get to Sand Kingdom. But we do get to see the dino, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, he would yeah. not be in the run otherwise. And there's this conveniently placed little trampoline, which you place yourself correctly, jump all the way up, and dive into the boss arena. Well done. Very nice. Now we've got the Mad and Brutal fight here. We are going to try to make a sandwich with the Golden Chain Chop. We're going to throw out Cappy, get Mario on the other side, and then make the Oreo right here by <laughs> pinning it between it and then knocking off the hat, bringing in Cappy, re-grabbing it, while also picking up these coins and setting it up again. Get it at its full extension and then knock it back at her. Bing, bang, bong, grab it, and knock it back. Fight Very done. Nice. Well done. Yeah. Leaves it at that full extension. If it's any shorter than that, they'll just like chase you around the arena. You'll waste lots of time. So, and this is our first multi moon. We're three whole moons. That's right. And conveniently, Cascade Kingdom needs five power moons in order to get out of here. So you kind of intended so let's get that first power moon called our first power moon. <laughs> These it. three, and then we got one more. Should, <laughs> should I suggest the thing we talked about earlier? <laughs> <laughs> you want to do that? I kind of want to suggest it. All right. If y'all hate this, fun. we're going to try it for this moon right here. All right. In years past, we've done moon. In years past, we've done... Try this with me. When you would do that, go, bruh. <laughs> Everyone try it on this moon. Bruh. <laughs> oh. Uh. I didn't get the clip either. That's sad, but that's okay. That's okay. Coming out here. Yeah, once right. again, well backed up. All right. So we're entering Sand Kingdom now. That's Cascade Kingdom out of the way, the first five moons. Bit of a tutorial level. Sand Kingdom is where things open up a lot. Um, now, that little timer thing that I was doing at the beginning with the switch clock and stuff like that, I had about a 10-second window. Uh, unfortunately, missed some of the tricks. I missed my window, so we're going to have to do it manually. But it gives me a little bit of a learning experience for you guys at home. So there are these little seeds uh, that you can plant in the seed pots, and they actually are supposed to take 20 real-time minutes to grow. Um, but by using Daylight Savings Time is what I was trying to do. Uh, you plant the seed in the pot, Daylight Savings Time happens on the Nintendo Switch, it goes forward an hour and grows immediately. So that's kind of like a free time save, but I can show you that they, you know, you can manually do it at home just by going into your Switch menu, so. You're looking for your no reset runs and everything. You might notice we're playing in, I believe, simplified Chinese? This is traditional it's Chinese. Traditional Chinese. You have all sorts of language options here. This saves about 10, 15 seconds over the course of an any percent run. Just speed up that text just a little bit. But now we're getting into the first big chunky kingdom of the run. We got the Sand Kingdom. We got to get 16 power moons here. And this is one of those kingdoms where the route has changed at any percent seemingly over 100 times. Oh, for sure. On different little variations. That's right. Every single time it gets showcased somewhere, it's different. Mm -hmm. So that's that seed that I'm talking about. Intentional and, little bonk there to kind of redirect Mario then on the on the knockback. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it forward an hour. Pretend that all happened automatically in a perfect world. That was some nice menuing, though. Thank I you. Was, I was going to actually say... <laughs> I always fumble <laughs> over the menus. Like, I go into the controller batteries settings. There's just there's a lot going on. <laughs> now you can see that it is just fully grown just like that. So... Bruh. I love this already. This is great. <laughs> this is the greatest idea I've ever come up with. It's awesome. All right. Bruh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this run should have started after midnight. <laughs> That's definitely the vibe. All right. <laughs> Bruh. So this is a really cool strat right here with the bird. He's going to go down to the ground, triple jump with the cancel right there. And now he's going to try to do an up throw. That was a really good option play by Dangerous right there. Bruh. And now make our way up. He's going to be very careful throughout the course of the Sand Kingdom to actually keep certain things off camera. Bruh. <laughs> Otherwise, there is a platform that is way off in the ruins that would be moving off screen. And as is the case with a lot of video games, if something is not on screen, then it doesn't actually exist. Right. So, bruh. Yeah. yeah. So something that's cool about this newer Sand Kingdom route that we were talking about, we actually have to pay attention to this platform at two separate places. So here you need to make sure it's not in the way when you do this up throw so you can capture this bullet bill for a Dram Strat. For the Dram Strat, the capture warp that everybody's So nice. cool, love that. And now from here on out as well, you need to pay attention where the platform is for a different, uh, a different trick that happens right at the end of the kingdom uh, using an out-of-bounds clip with that platform. So... 
Bruh. I love we that. are so chill here right now. And you might have noticed back there that that power moon he got out of the crate. Oh, he's just leaving it there. I love routing like this. So just remember that sitting over there. Bruh. Oh, no. Oh. That's not where you go. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> bruh. bruh. <laughs> That's just a bruh right there. Oh, we're all the way back here. Okay. So. It's all right. We're yeah, have to, uh, let's say we can, we can get back over there. Yeah, we'll figure this out. Yeah, While we'll we're doing that, do we have time for a donation? Yeah, you yeah. know what? This is great. While we're resetting, for sure. That's <laughs> we have $25 from Stanjo, who says, I absolutely love watching Super Mario Odyssey at GDQ, especially when Dangerous is running it. Now, the question is, will the crowd clap for each moon collected? <laughs> The answer is no. Spike Vegeta had the idea. He said it out loud, and now here we are for the rest of the night. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. And we're back on track. We're back on track. Bruh. Yo, I, so obviously, a couple of mishaps here earlier. Dangerous is like, bruh. That's what Dangerous <laughs> am, is like. I am like, bruh. <laughs> But Dangerous is doing a really good job of just like thinking about where his cycles are going to be at any time. This might still work, actually. This might work. Actually. This would be a really fast cycle if you can squeeze in there. Oh. 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 I was a little too fast for my own good, but that's okay. We just so have to wait close. for it to come back. Yeah. So this is part of the newest Sand Kingdom route is this thing right here. So we let go of the ledge just at the right time and throw Cappy into the wall, and we're able to just kind of slip through the wall. The platform pushes us in. We can grab this moon while we're out of bounds, stay out of bounds, and get into the back of this little Sphinx vault here where we can get lots of coins and another moon. Bruh. <laughs> I, love, I can hear people put a different level of stank on each of them. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are like, bro! <laughs> Someone's back there like deadlifting, but also throwing the bruh in. <laughs> Whoa, you went through the bench in the mm -hmm. ball area? Right? That's crazy. I've never seen anyone do that. <laughs> Just threaten the needle. That actually scared the crap out of me. I thought you were going to bonk. I think it's rolling at the bench for no reason. <laughs> yeah, you learn when you run this game that the hardest thing to do is not bonk. Yeah. For Mario real. wants to bonk. That nose of his is just avarice. <laughs> it wants to bonk on everything on screen. See, I've always had the same thought watching Dangerous. He slips right between the, the bench and the little pole right there. And you, like, there. flinch a little bit. Like, and some, do it. some of the hitboxes are, like, huge. There's, like, rocks that you, like extend all the way to Argentina, and yeah. it's, it's easy to bonk on them. So Yeah, at the beginning of Sand Kingdom, when you're going towards the sea, there, there, there's this one pole that I swear has a hitbox that extends, like, probably at least three times the actual pole. You can bonk, like, on nothing directly next to that pole. It's really funny. Yeah, I, I love the, exactly I love the clip mean. system on the Switch, where you can always... Because every Super Mario Odyssey runner has an angry clip. <laughs> I'll be like, how did I bonk on this? <laughs> Oh, for You're sure. Just, it's dead air just sitting out there. I feel like I got playing Super Mario 64 yeah. TikTok clock. I went, I went past the, uh, the angry clips and I just started spamming screenshots anytime I got mad. That was, that was my, my rage <laughs> outlet. Well, one thing that would make everyone really happy is if we were able to unlock that chef incentive. We're currently at nine thousand four hundred eleven dollars out of the needed fifteen thousand to make that happen. Thank you, everyone, but keep those donations coming in. We have to beat that by Lunch and Kingdom, and we're kind of going fast today, so that's not going to be a lot of time. All right, Danger's going for... Oh, did you get it? Maybe. Yo, hey, yo, yo, let's go. That okay, is so that, hard. Yeah, no, that variation of late clip is a two-frame window with a very precise position setup. I that am very is, happy I got that. That was one of the ones that Tyrone was showing me. He was like, you got to get this. You got to nail this at GDQ. That is, so, I'm it. super happy I got that, that one. That is so sick. <laughs> Woo! What happened? What did we do? And right. right there, you might have noticed that as he went out of bounds, he not only dropped down to get the moon, he did an up throw with Cappy in order to hit that checkpoint. Bruh. So he could warp back up, <laughs> get the moon, and then drop down and continue along the way. Now he's just going to get three more relatively simple moons. I think this is a great time to once again, what did we just clap for? Yeah, what, what, what was the excitement back there? Or was it just that I got the Oh, this right. I know what y'all clapped for. I think, well, no, I might. I, <laughs> I just saw a number on screen. And I was like, oh, that's probably one of those. Numbers are very exciting. Numbers that's are true. Great. Um, but yeah. Make yeah. sure you unlock that chef's outfit. We need it by the start of the Luncheon Kingdom. Dangerous is pretty fast. He's already on the fourth kingdom, and that's only the 11th kingdom that we're going to be going to. So keep it rolling in, gamers. Nice little show off. 
We can just talk to the lady through the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, set yourself up in a little first person. And that's it. Lake Kingdom in out. One thing you might notice that's different than a lot of strats, if you watched, if maybe the, the only other time you ever watched an Odyssey any percent run was Nike Vita's run back in 2018, is that a lot of the story moons, yeah. we have slowly found out we can just start cutting them. Right. So there's a boss fight here, Ganon, that you could have fought. Yeah. And it's funny how long the cutscenes that are attached to those boss fights are, because that boss fight isn't that long. No. And it gives you like three moons. Yeah. And it's still faster to go out of your way to get three other moons. Yeah. Because the, of all the cutscenes attached to them. Because of the main fight. principle of it is like you can't speed up the cutscenes. They're there. They're yeah. they're stuck, they're fixed. But if you replace it with movement, that movement can always get better. So for real. Right. That being said, we're now going into the Wooded Kingdom, which is definitely one of the most difficult kingdoms of all time. Yes. This will always yes. be one of the hardest kingdoms to do in any percent. The very vertical kingdom, lots of stuff can go wrong. Got a little rock ju juggle right here, barely baiting that bunny in place, and then throwing that rock yeah. into another rock to then get that moon, come back as the moon is spawning it as the bunny. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get tired of that. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> this is my favorite variation. Odyssey every year, bras in the crowd. That's what we're doing. Yeah, sounds good. Also, while you're making your way towards it, I do want to touch up on moon clips because you did do a moon clip in Lake, but you did a very hard variation of them. You did the triple jump clip, and that is not what we're going to be seeing coming up here after one more moon. Basically, um, if there's a moon that's able to be spawned next to a wall, you can pretty much use that to clip out of bounds. Yes. And the setup is you do a backflip, and then you cap throw at about the peak of the backflip. And what that does is it tilts Mario sideways and pushes him backwards. And then you can interrupt that by grabbing the moon, and it, that can push you backwards through a wall. Oh, but I did not but get it this that time. That is not what happened, unfortunately. Unfortunately, not this time, no. But that's okay. There is a backup route for this. Yep. Um, not clip was like the the one that I was just telling you about that Nitro Vita was here at GDQ when it was discovered. Yeah. Um, luckily, we have changed the route to kind of eliminate some of the story stuff. <laughs> so I w there is still some new stuff to see in this Wooded Kingdom here, like running up this ramp. It makes no sense that you can do that, but Danger's able to do it. And now having some beautiful spin pound movement into a cap return jump into that beautiful corkscrew and grabbing that moon. Beautiful stuff. And now we're going to keep going, immediately roll canceling it to have that beautiful vector down to this nut. Bruh. Get another bruh and head over to the nut in the red maze. We're also really making good progress on our incentive. Less than $5,000 to go to unlock the chef's outfit. Keep it rolling, everyone. Yes, chefs. Let's go. We need our yes chefs in chat. Dropping out beautiful D capture into another corkscrew. Down we go. And for those quick little backup moon that we have to pick up because we missed the clip, we're going to take out that piranha and grab his story moon in just a little bit. Perfect movement up here to get up on top of the nut, have another corkscrew, and then immediately jump up in the air as you break it so that you keep yourself elevated to roll off of this and gain a little bit of speed, rounding this corner and up to your story moon. Yeah. Beautiful sequence of movement there, Dangers. Thank you, thank you. It's funny how just running around and doing the movement in this game, there's so much to talk about. Oh, like, there's yes. so much happening. Like, you can just keep talking the entire time if yes. there's not a cutscene. How, how much has been meticulously studied to, like, figure out how to do all this stuff? That's that's the beauty of a game like this. Oh, for sure. Even Speaking of which. this right here, yeah. There's supposed to be a flower road switch you can use right there. No, nope, we're just going to triple jump vector all of that. Cat bounce our way up. Bust another one of these. Get another moon. Bruh and make our way over to the tower, where Spewart, another one of the bunnies, are. Uh, but we may not be fighting him. We'll see what happens. Maybe not. Spewart's too much story for me. And I absolutely love those instant captures. We get to kind of highlight each of the various movements throughout this, where if you can throw Cappy kind of around the backside of an enemy, you can knock their hat off and then instantly capture them, utilizing a little baby skip right there to extend the uproot around that corner, jump up, and get that other moon without having to slowly go around the flower road. Flower roads are slow. We don't want to use them. Spirits up there. We don't care about bringing peace to this kingdom. We're dropping down, and we're going Ooh. to immediately go to this nut around the corner that is its name, Kanana by Nintendo, I'm not making that up, and get underneath it to get those quick little double hits to get another move. Yeah. 
And with that, we are going into the final two moons of this kingdom. We're going to the infamous flooding pipeway right here. Very cycle-based stuff. Have to wait around in the water. Danger's going to be going for, I imagine, a little bit of a difficult skip. Let's see if he can get it. I might as well give it a try. Why not? Oh, not like that. Oh, just, oh, man. Just oh. maybe like a frame late on my press. Yeah. That's okay. That's another one of the triple jump moon clips, except unlike the one in Lake, that one is actually frame perfect. You have to have a very specific setup and throw a cappy on one particular frame. Yeah. So. Extremely complicated. Uh, like I said, shout outs to Tyrone 18. He's doing runs on, on in Super Mario Odyssey all the time. He's the GOAT. If you want to see that trick be done, that's where you go. That's where you go for sure. For sure. Overall, well, we're going to the super next world. Well backed up. Go ahead, Char Bunny. Give us some donations. I was going to say, well, we're going to the next world. I would love to share some love from your community. We have, Please do. We have ten dollars from Aiden of Passaville who says, "Dangers, you're on the GDQ stage. I'm so proud of you. It's been incredibly, <laughs> absolutely incredible to watch you obliterate this game over the past four years. Best of luck on the run, Chef. Less than three. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> We also have $25 from Chainlinks, who says, Hiya, Dangers. Chainlinks here. Super awesome to finally see you live on the big stage. Me and the rest of the Mod Magpies and all of your community are sending you all our love and know you are going to crush it. Get those moons. Yes, Chef. Thank you, Chef. We're at $10,500 towards that incentive, so getting closer, but Dangers is also getting closer to Luncheon Kingdom. Please help get those donations in soon. How long do you say we are have until we get to that incentive? About um, 20 minutes. About 20 minutes, yeah. yeah. We're about 20 minutes away from Lunch and Kingdom here. Well, all right, chat, time for your own speed run. 20 minute estimate. Let's see if we can make it happen. All right, we're in Cloud Kingdom here, so we have to fight my dad. Sorry, uh, we need to fight Bowser. Hey, yo, on main? <laughs> we're going to come over here. We're going to ground pound the ground over here. Luigi's in the ground. Um, and maybe with good timing, I can get the hat just in time. So that Luigi hint art was really good because we need some coins. Yeah, coins. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about right now. Right. Just coins. We're going to punch him one more time with uh, this <laughs> game. Do you have any more donations? Okay, we're not. All right. <laughs> Let's just keep punching. So, yeah, he's going to fake out this time. There we go. All right. bang. Well done, fight. Woo! Now, in the interview, I said Lost Kingdom is my favorite kingdom, and that's, like, half true. Yeah. Lost Kingdom is my favorite kingdom if everything goes right, but right. it's... Uh, <laughs> It's a scary one. Yeah, it's a very vertical kingdom filled with one-hit death poison, so... Yeah. And Klepto. And the bird, Klepto. The bird is there in, and, you know, invoking fear in the hearts of yes. many. Unfortunately, a bird that you must avoid. I usually like birds. I don't know why that happens sometimes. Yeah, should mess with any cycles or anything, though. He's going to try to get a beautiful cat vault right there. Just enough to be able to make it up that gap. Off to, oh, what a, what a backup. What, what a, a backup. That wow. was an unbelievable read on Danger's part. He got Cappy's intercepted. <laughs> still went into the end zone for the touchdown. That was beautiful. That was crazy. I can't. You are a legend. Yeah, I can't, was... I can't even begin to describe how... Like the roller coaster of emotions oh, I just felt. That was cat like reflexes, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I don't know how I just did that. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, dude. That was so cool. All right. <laughs> So you saw right there, Dangerous throw out Cappy's gonna try to do a little bit of a cute movement where whenever Cappy comes back to you and then you press A, that'll give you that kind of vaulted jump up in the air. It gives you similar jump height to like a double jump right there. And uh, that gives him enough height to be able to get up to the moon in the tree. Right. This kingdom is so fast, like three moons went by in that explanation. Here's another attempted trick. Basically, once again, this comes back to if something's off screen, it doesn't exist. So what he actually did there is he unloaded all of the blocks behind the uh, the block with the moon in it. And because they were unloaded, the torpedo went straight through and hit the block that had the moon in it. Oh, uh, get it in. What? What, what is guess? happening? What? The, what? You am dove I, into a wall slide. Am I allowed to say it? That's never happened before? That's uh, never uh, happened before. I... <laughs> bruh. <laughs> I, I want, uh, bruh. Bruh. <laughs> that is definitely a bruh moment. <laughs> Dangerous, you have probably done this 10,000 times. At least. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen that yeah, happen. This is... I'm assuming you've never seen it happen. I've never seen it happen. All right, so. we'll, just have to, we'll okay. just have to wait for that one. That's okay. And now this absolutely death-defying drop down to this last moon. Ooh, 
Dangerous on like the first frame possible timing that. Now into the up throw, the wow, dive back into a bouncing back up and making his way out of there, avoiding the poisonous, deathly Kool-Aid or whatever it is. Yeah, that was yeah. very clean. We did get some cool stuff in that Lost Kingdom. That game. It's I'm, I'm about to have heart palpitation. I was going to say, that, <laughs> that threw me for a ride. That's why <laughs> it's my favorite kingdom. It's always a thrill. That was a top five. <laughs> dive in Mario Odyssey speedrunning history. That was... Because, like, a lot... That's, I think, also one of the beauties of this game is the speedrun, is that it is a, 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 a system built in where you can save yourself, right? Right. We've all had something where, like, we fell under a platform and then threw Cappy and dove and went wrapped buck back up around the platform or something. That was kind of that moment right there. Dangerous, on the first frame, realized what was happening and then dove to safety. And then really lost, like, almost no time on top of that. Anyways, we're in the Metro. Kingdom, this place is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the movement, even for just the very beginning of this kingdom, has evolved so much since this was last uh, showcased. So here, this awning jump has been optimized to oblivion. It's going to be doing a Shirani bounce there on the wall, immediately into a long jump, triple jump, using that to get on top of the building, and then long jumping straight back down oh, to the moon. Very absolutely clean. gorgeous opening movement there from Dangers. And now going to roll off of the side and then just bounce off of the Goomba, giving you that little bit of extra height to, cap, to cut out a cap throw when you don't need it. Cheeky little spin throw roll cancel there. It's easier to keep forward momentum with spin throw roll cancels than it is with any other roll cancel. And straight into a City Hall cycle skip here, getting on that elevator early into some double Shirani bounce action to get straight up on the pole. Very, so very, cool. very clean. Yeah, this movement's so, so fancy. Very nice, oh, very nice. Goodness. And it's not done yet. Now we gotta jump across this entire gap. We are gonna fall a long way down if he doesn't make this, but easy stuff for Mr. Dangers. All right. Very tricky there, because the camera likes to fight you. Um, but we made it work. Going over some of like the little subtle movements, you can see him doing little spin throws all the time. That just allows you to have a wider radius and catch things from just a little bit further away. That's one of those that saves frames every time, but it adds up to a ton of time by the end of the run for the hundreds of times you're gonna do it. That's now right. we're into the Mecha Wiggler fight. We're gonna have to take him out in two cycles right here. Right, and this second cycle is the only real major instance of RNG That's right. in the run. There are 11, places that the Wiggler can go after Danger's done with this, and there's two uh, separate uh, patterns that you can get with each location. So in total, there's 22 uh, separate Wiggler patterns. Let's see which one he gets here. I do not know any of these. <laughs> uh, this one I think is all right, actually. Yeah, this looks good. Yeah, so now he's got to space these properly to try to take them out. Okay. So that's the fun. seven pattern. Nice. The seven. It's just <laughs> that, no, that, that is what it's called. That's oh, what that is called. what it's called. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So this game, this game has been meticulously picked apart. It's got one of the biggest speedrunning communities of all time. Uh, right to the point of like, you know, analyzing the RNG in this fight and like uh, coming up with names for every single one of the 22 right. patterns and stuff like that. Uh, top runners have broken it down, figured out exactly what you need to do for all of them. Every single pattern can be two cycled. There are optimal ones, obviously, but. Bruh. Bruh. Hooray, <laughs> bruh. <laughs> and bro, we've only got about 2.5K to go on this incentive. Let's keep the hype going for the chef costume. We got That's Char right. Bunny Woo! saying, bruh, let's go. <laughs> Look what you've done to me, Shout out to Char Bunny, one of the greatest hosts we've ever had. She's amazing. Let's go. Heck yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We've only got Metro, Snow, and Seaside left before we get to Luncheon Kingdom. So we got a very small amount of time left to get in bruh. for bruh for the chef, so. Now making his way across, he's gonna be coming up here on the scooter clip. So normally, use this dude, use an RC car. Or, from a very intense, basically flipping your pro controller upside down, you are able to barely lean Mario in there and get that moon. Now, going over to the side, Cappy is already snapped onto the pylon, snap right to it, and jump down to the greatest moon in the game, a hole in one. We're talking to bench friends. Yep. I do want to mention a little tiny optimization that he did there as well. 
Um, on the garbage ground pound boon, he actually ground pounded on the very edge to save like a very small fraction of a second, but it prevented the garbage from actually like going all over the place, which reduces lag. Wow. True. Yeah, obviously it's a more modern game other than like Majora's Mask I was playing earlier, but Metro Kingdom is a very laggy kingdom, easily the most laggy. So anywhere where you can save that with a little bit of frames, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And now you got here the slots, Moon. Uh, this is kind of an unconventional way to do it. Just one spin throw barely catches all of them. Yeah. A very difficult strat, actually. And now making his way up for some cool movement to get over to another very cool sub area. I love this sub area. The sub bullet is awesome. I was so glad when this was added into any percent years ago. Again, cutting as many story moons as we can. Jumping from pole to pole, over to the last pole, making our way over, getting this dumpster moon. And Dangerous wants to make sure his movement is as clean as possible so then he can make his way over and do a little spin pound into an up throw, into an insta capture, knocking off the Very hat nice. and grabbing the bullet bill, which is much faster than Mario, to get over to this last moon. Once again, beautifully done stuff. This is an absolutely fantastic Metro Kingdom from Dangerous so far. We still got another seven moons to go. This the most demanding kingdom at 20 power moons needed to get to the end. Yeah, and the the segment after Night Metro, after you defeat the Wiggler, I would say is the hardest segment in the entire yes. run. 100%. Like this this kingdom is not easy at all, and Very Dangerous is just flying through it, so. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I'll say lovingly, named by the Super Mario Odyssey steering community as New Bonk City. Yep. Because it's very easy, especially all of this. Dangerous is having to space all those perfectly to just dive onto each spot before he goes up to the next one. The beautiful little cheeky spin pound to drop down to this moon right here. The man's on fire. He's got to drop into the pool. Oh. Get the bullseye, get the bullseye. Bullseye, bullseye. Bullseye. Hey! Guys. I'll take it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love this crowd. Y'all are killing it tonight. Keep it up. Keep yeah, it up. Yeah, we are. Oh, yeah. Wait. That's all right. So what he was trying to set up for there was a reverse people's room. If you do a triple jump off that trash can, you can actually get these moons out of order. It saves about one second, but if you fail it like that, you don't really lose any time. Yeah, still very cool movement, including cutting out that middle pole right there in order to get just make it two little little swingy doozies yeah. to get over to the last moon. And that is 20. I, I want to give a big shout. Danger's absolutely killed it there. And I want to hear if people throwing down donations are killing it. I'm seeing that total. We need 115,000. We got 20 more power moons to go before we're going to need it. Charbonne, do you have any donations to help get us there? Oh, you know we do. We're not less than $2,000 away from that chef outfit. Thank you, everyone, for getting those donations Woo! in. We have $250 from Resident who says, Danger's is the best, sweetest speed burp ever. Get that <laughs> chef suit on. Well, we're working on it. Yes, chef. We also have $10 from Blue Antoid, who says, this Mario Odyssey run is redonkulous. Let's see Chef Mario. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, Chef. We also have $50 from Notepad, who says, let him cook. I would love to cook. <laughs> I would love to cook, Char Bunny. <laughs> All right, so Snow Kingdom, this is another one of those kingdoms that I was like, hey, Tyrone, give me some tips. What can we do? So I'm adding something really re brand new, oh. brand new and fresh. Oh, yeah. Something that uh, has just been kind of added into these any percent speed runs recently. Um, and it's kind of a testament that, like, there are still people finding, like, really intense and crazy optimizations that, like, two years ago we might have found and been like, nah, we're not going to put this in the run ever. Like, this is way too crazy. Right. There's no way this is going to save time. And yet here we are in 2023, and we're, we're making it happen. So I hope I can do it justice. Exactly. This is, like you're saying, this is a trick that was found years ago. Like, this is something that's been known, but is only now working its way into the very upper echelon of uh, Super Mario Odyssey speedruns. That's right. So we got a couple moons here. He's going to have to make his way up with some good verticality to get to this moon, get a little shot moon. And here in a little bit, he's going to be going for... <clears throat> Another uh, little clip right here, utilizing a moon, just barely push himself out of bounds. So, a little bit of a reroute here to make sure he can end on this moon that he needs to clip out of bounds for. Just do a little shopping. Mm -hmm. There's a total three shopping moons now in any right. percent, so he does need to make sure there's a little bit of coin routing involved in order to buy three different shot moons, all costing 100 apiece. And man, could they not have just put it as the first slot? You have to remember to not overmash and not jump into the little heart upgrade there. Yeah. 
All right, so yeah, coming up here is going to be not a clip that we were talking about, but it is another out of bounds clip. This is a Snow Kingdom Moon clip. Oh, not quite. That one only loses a second. That, that's that's like it's the smallest out of bounds. You're out of bounds for about three seconds. Right. Yeah. You would it just is. have a straighter line directly into this. Into uh, this little alcove yeah. over here. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that I missed all of the backflip moon clips, but got the triple jump yeah, one. The that's much harder version. Don't really understand what that's about. Speaking of triple jumps, yeah! I love <laughs> that momentum right there. Utilizing the Taifu in order to dart all the way across that room, keeping tons of momentum. Also make sure to keep this Typhoon nice right here capture. just a little bit off screen so you can manipulate its cycle just a little bit. And you might say like, oh, that looked unfortunate. One got to stay alive. That was actually intentional by Dangerous right there because the camera doesn't have to zoom out, zoom back in as much. And he actually saves a little bit of time in the process. Yeah, very, very clean. Uh, Goomba Room? No, that's not Goomba Room. That not is Goomba? Poison Room. Oh, yeah, that's Poison Room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got Goomba Room coming up right after right. this. And this is where the new clip is going to take place. Uh, up until very, very, very recently, everyone that was doing Super Mario Odyssey any percent speedruns would not collect this moon first in this sub area. But we have some new shenanigans to new, pull. That's right. <laughs> The bros are a little weak on the story moons. I think we need to work on our team. <laughs> yeah, they're always the most awkward, like, bruh, 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 bruh. People, like, almost had it going during my darker run last year by the end of a three-hour run. <laughs> Of 500 of those suckers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so here is the setup right here. He's going to be trying to grab the specific part of the ledge. Going to have to get rid of this Goomba right here, staying in position. C up. Not quite. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Go for it again. Oh, that I thought was that. I thought it was good, too. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, it's slippery. We're on ice. All right. Let's try this again, Mario. Up until recently, we thought we there was no way we were going to be able to do this. Yeah. I can't overstate how difficult this is even with a camera setup. Yeah, the problem is like it is like basically pixel perfect on the camera setup. Oh my goodness. All right. This is the one I can feel it. Yeah! Let's go. Oh! Oh, that's tragic. That's tragic. That's actually tragic. Hey, we're right here. Do it again. Chat, give dangers your energy. Chat, and live chat. Let's Woo! do it. I can't not call them chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! yeah! And yes, Chef. The back to back. That was crazy. Woohoo! All right, we're not done in Snow Kingdom, though. One more. And now we have another incredibly difficult trick, the Snow Dram right here, utilizing every single move in the toolbox with the vectoring, with the hat twirl. Very just nice. Just it onto that platform and get his 10th and final move. And with that, we have met the Yes Chef. It's time for Super Mario Odyssey. Good timing. We are Good going timing. To... We're one kingdom away, so. Perfect timing, everyone. Thank you so much. We will get to see that Chef costume in Luncheon Kingdom. Yes Chef. Yes Chef. Yes, chef. <laughs> So for a little bit of context, that jump that I just did uh, was probably the hardest thing we were doing in Super Mario Odyssey back in 2018. So yeah. yep. all of the out-of-bounds stuff and like all the other crazy stuff that you've seen so far has all been compounded on top of that. Um, and that almost makes it look like child's play now. Any percent at the highest level is so incredibly intimidating how much people have tried to push it. Every Like, it used to be, you were talking about this earlier, Dangerous, how Seaside you're about to go to was like the break kingdom. Yes. Not I'm anymore. just going to chill. Not anymore. Not gonna. even close. No. You get a lot of moons in ways you are not supposed to get them in this kingdom now. This is the out-of-bounds kingdom. Fishes, they going to be clipping. Not nice to mention, trip. yeah, sure, this I'll beginning movement. This beginning movement is already just utilizing so many things. Very nice. Yeah, every time you see him go up and do a cat bounce that's like right at a wall, it's him manipulating the spacing just perfectly. Mm -hmm. So that he can just dive into it and immediately get that little boost up and then Cappy comes back to him. Yep. 
Going in another very unintended way to get up here into a beautiful up throw. Give himself wow. that dive. That was so sexy. I love that. Do it again. <laughs> but there's yeah. no moon there anymore. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Do For the again. content, come on. That's fine. You got seven more moons to get. Let's go get this fish. Love every time Dangerous is doing a strat like that where he does a roll cancel to convert all that roll momentum into a diagonal, throw out Cappy, and then bounce off him to get through as much of the water as he can as possible. And now we're going for the fish and chip. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, that's okay. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Could have been a little six second time save there, but yeah, no, no biggie. Sometimes you can get that chest to push you through the wall. And then you can kind of cut all the corners on this little secret pathway that I'm doing right. uh, out of bounds. But don't worry, we will still go out of bounds in this kingdom. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you we will be going out of bounds in this kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of imagine that moon where we had to go through the tunnel. Basically, you just go underneath, grab that moon from the bottom, and then clip back up into bounds right here to get this moon. With that, we just got four quick moons left to go. Bro. Nice. Grab these two, and then we're going to set up for another clip. And I tell everybody, if you want to get into Super Mario Odyssey speedrunning, I know a lot of what you're watching Dangers do here right now might look super intimidating. I could never run this game. I run this game. I know. Any of you could run this game, and this is the first trick you should learn. Oh, definitely. It is as simple like as laying it out there. You move away from it so it doesn't eject your seat yourself back, and then you're able to get just enough out of bounds to be able to get this moon, keep going down, head into where you're supposed to be answering the questions of the Sphinx, and get this moon as well. Very nice. All right, nice Seaside Kingdom. Really beautiful movement right there. All right. All right. It's time to cook. It's yes, time to cook. It is time to let this man cook. <laughs> Chef's online? Yes, yes Chef. chef. <laughs> Shout out to ADEF for the Ratatouille run, by the way. Uh, the best meme of the 2023 uh, SGDQ by far. All right. I am ready to cook. It Are you guys ready time. to cook? I'm ready to cook. Not only is Lunching Kingdom where we're going to be cooking, but it's also probably one of the most impressive changes, in my opinion, to yes. the any percent route oh, over, sure. over the time that it's been developed. I have to give a shout out to my good friend, Jay Hobbs, 296, also an interview team with me. Years ago, he theorized that he thought what he called a vegan route would be the most <laughs> optimal thing for lunch. <laughs> Meatless, cheeseless, which if you know that man, he only eats meat and cheese. So that's what's really funny. And it turns out that actually is the fastest route for Lunch and Kingdom right here. Right. We're going to skip the meat, we're going to skip the cheese, and we're going to skip even fighting Spewart. Exactly. Beautiful movement right there at the start to be able to get just enough height off that salt pile. Make right. it over here. Yeah, and this really just emphasizes how slow story moons are because by skipping this story move with this jump that Dangerous is about here, about to do here, it reduces your movement options. Oh, you're, oh. you're fine. I'm, I'm cooking, but yeah, not in cooking. the way that I want it. Uh, my man's cooking. You're good. So you see this platform that he's about to get over to. Imagine this entire rectangle. He can't hover over any of it. That right. entire thing is a boss arena. Very nice. Okay, nice got the done. skip. There we go. And yeah. what I was going to say is that by doing that, you reduce your movement options later in the kingdom significantly. There are no potaboos or lava bubbles spawned for the entire rest of the kingdom, so you need to use Mario's movement to bounce over big lava gaps. Yeah, starting off right here. So in order to be a chef, Dangers on the fly today made a new route for you all <laughs> to get 15 regional coins so he can buy the chef's outfit. That's right. So there's the first three of them getting it off that fork. Grab three right here. And then make our way into the slots. This is going to be the same as we saw with the slots moon earlier, but it's even tighter because you got to go five wide on it. So he's got to make sure his movement is frame perfect to be able to get it. Let's go. Nice. Bruh. This is our last big kingdom for moons, so we need the bruhs to come in strong. That's true, that's true. Three more sets right here, and then another three. And then, so again, like you were saying, Ganon, there's a lot of things that just aren't going to be present. Right. So, like, there would be potaboos or the lava bubbles down here, chilling. 
just uh, waiting to help you kind of traverse around this area. Uh, make sure you don't die on the little Pepto Bismol right here. Instead, we, we got to get creative. Yeah. Yeah. There is, so normally you can only bounce on Cappy once, but by throwing Cappy out and then bouncing off the lava, that refreshes your ability to get it. This is the Forks movement. I'm gonna let y'all watch this. It's so gorgeous. It speaks for itself. Getting those purples, cause we gotta cook. We gotta cook. Oh, Very nice. Gorgeous stuff. Let him cook. <laughs> let him cook. Yeah. Nicely done, Forks Room. And now, once again, the Lava Bubbles, they're still not there. So we got to do that same thing again, where by throwing Cappy out and then movement. holding him, this is such gorgeous movement, he is able to get an additional bounce and just get over Very here. nice. And now we got to go on our favorite thing we like to do as speedrunners. We're going on an escort mission. That's just like a thing with gamers in general. We love escort missions. They're great. So we're going to... Do a spin pound, charge up a lot of momentum, and then carry this turn up all the way over here with a triple jump, throw it across, and also save Mario as well, saving you a ton of running around and movement. And get that. That is like, that's when like you throw the basketball and it gets like stuck up on the little <laughs> thing at the top. That was, all right. Mario's cooking right now. Yeah, right? we are literally cooking at the moment. Anyone got a broom? Nice. We're going to go for the cap vault. Let's go. Bruh. Laying down Cappy right there. He's then going to go for a spin pound into a beautiful, cheeky little cat ball. It always looks so good. And now, Chad, we have arrived. It is time to let this man cook. Chef Mario is in the house. My man. Thank you all so much for that $115,000 that you put towards getting this run to the marathon and putting this man in a chef's outfit. Yes, chef. We chef. We chef. We chef. <laughs> we. How many moons all day, Mario? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, all right, we're switching to yes. We're switching to yes. Are you sure we're not switching to chef? <laughs> yes, chef. Yes, chef. That's what we need. <laughs> all right, one of the coolest looking jumps in the game coming up. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so this is like the ultimate final boss oh, of this sure. kingdom. Is you look out, how's he going to cross this? There's no possible way. With a little twirl, barely extending to... Oh, oh that's so, okay. That's all right. That's the preview. That's mm -hmm. the preview. You understand what's happening? You're, I'm, I'm yep. giving you the visualization. The Orange chef it. has laid out the ingredients. We're now going to make the dish. <laughs> the oven is preheated. Right. <laughs> Let him cook. Let him cook. Hat twirl to extend that just a little bit. Ooh, Ooh the single block. Come on. Let's see if he can make the distance. He nice. Into the beautiful cat vault. Into another spin pound. And then going to barely set himself up to make his way down here. I love this beautiful little spin throw right here to knock out the door. Barely hitting it and wrapping yourself into the room for one more spin pound. Grabbing this Potaboo and making our way up. And if you have a perfect movement throughout it, you can catch a very nice cycle on the last platform. I, I really love that this sub area ended up making it into 80% yes. because uh, it's very treacherous, but it looks very nice. Yeah, it's so a lot of people don't know. For the most part, like with all the different captures in the game, there's almost always a, if you shake, it does something. Yes. And almost always for speedrunners, it's a good thing. Right. So that's what allows them to do those like kind of little horizontal corkscrew movements right there. He's got one more moon he needs to get up. <laughs> needs to get on top of the Odyssey. Odyssey kind of big. There we go. Uh, please don't fall off. I think fine. you'll make the platform. Oh! oh! Mario was going for a run there. Never That's seen right. that happen before either. The Pepto Bismol is powerful. Yes. This it's, is. It burned in my booty today. This is an incredibly <laughs> difficult kingdom so late in the run. Especially, like, this movement in particular is very. Yes. Yeah, hard. I do like a leap of faith off of here. There it is. Whoa! Oh, please okay. stay on the platform. You're playing with my heart, Dangers. <laughs> Mar <laughs> Mine has already given out four times today. <laughs> Okay, Cappy didn't want to come with me, so I guess we'll just let him cook. Yeah, you can save yourself like a second or two there by just landing on Cappy so you can immediately hit the Odyssey and move on. But with that, 
We have collected almost all the power moons that we need in the run. We are about to go into the Ruined Kingdom, so uh, I think this is a good time. This is kind of one of the only breaks that you really have in the run. This is, we're about to go Dark Souls 3, we're about to fight Mid-Ear. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Uh, this is a perfect little two and a half minute chunk of time. Char Bunny, I want us to hit that Paper Mario incentive and all the other ones after that. Let's rattle off some like two and a half minutes of donations. Let's take it away, yeah. You got it. And update you on that glitch exhibition. We are at $8,000 out of the $20,000 we need. Thank you for keeping those donations coming in for that one. I wonder if it's been helped along because we've gotten some of the most expensive bras I've ever seen in the history of anything. <laughs> we have $300 from Icy who says bruh. Oh my God. We have $250 from Dear Turtle who says bruh, chef. Bruh. And we have $200 from Jeremy Baramy who says bruh, chef, bruh, chef, bruh. <laughs> Jeremy Baramy, I love that name. Keep going. Yes, Jeremy Baramy, friend of the show. Thank you so much for all of those. We all have lots of love coming in from the community. We have $10 from EuroMD who says, yes, Chef Dangers. Much love from the crew. <laughs> we have $25 from Shun who says, hey, Dangers, so happy you're finally on stage and realizing your dream to play at GDQ. You're amazing and everyone in your server is cheering you on. Less than three. Yeah. Uh, well, DJ is my partner, so thank you. Aww. Aww. That's so sweet. We also have $25 from Nicole, who says, Hey there, Dangers. So happy to see you on the GDQ stage. Your community is super proud of you and cheering you on en masse. Good luck, Birdman. Thank you, Nicole. We have $970.98 from Adam. Whoa. Who says, love to see one of my favorite games and favorite speed games being run. Here's enough coins to buy all of the outfits. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> wow. All right, it's 100% time. Let's go. All right. <laughs> About to get some DLC with that. Anyway. Strap in. We're in for a long time here. <laughs> We also do have $124 from Kina1, who says, first time attending SGDQ and so happy to see my favorite streamer getting to run in the marathon. Good luck, Didi. Herb Jammies, also keeping my personal tradition of donating the number of moons required in the Super Mario Odyssey runs at GDQ. I saw that. Thank you so much for that $124. Very nice. We also have $25 from Recovery1, who says, yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, yes chef. chef. All right, this is the the second to last multi moon, so let's see if we can get our bras on. Okay. <sighs> Bra. There we go. There. Close I enough. I, I think Close we're enough. good. I think we're, we're good, good on there. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Ruined Kingdom is done. Pretty, pretty self explanatory kingdom. Uh, not a whole lot going on. Yeah. Nothing has really changed uh, because there is nothing to change. Um, you know, glitch hunters out there, if we can skip this kingdom, that'd be really great. Just please find a way. Um, that being said, it is a kind of nice break because we're going into the last uh, probably 10 minutes of the run here, Bowser's Kingdom and Moon Kingdom, two very intense kingdoms, especially if you're like on, on pace, your nerves are up. Oh, These yeah. kingdoms can be pretty, pretty dicey, so it's a nice little break. Yeah, Moon has a couple of absolutely massive skips to go for that can absolutely end your run. And Bowser's Kingdom is both a test of your movement, just lots of little micro movements to save time everywhere, and then an unbelievable final boss fight that right. uh, we'll see how both those uh, situations go here. Yeah, Bowser's Kingdom is also like the most painfully linear kingdom in this yes. run. Like you have to get every story moon in this kingdom to progress. Yeah, they have a little bit of a different take on here where you don't actually see up there highlighted how many power moons. Some beautiful movement right here from Dangers, though, to get up there, oh, not utilizing nice. the Pokio. You're going to see them mostly trying to skip the Pokio throughout a number of sequences in here. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But now a beautiful Ooh. triple jump off of that very thin, oh, great movement nasty. right there to bait the enemy to land down, exposing its weak point, and then immediately <laughs> going, in, hey, yo, we got some. <laughs> <laughs> it's T-posing up and hurt. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, it, a little bit of a different take here. They don't show how many power moons you necessarily need for this kingdom. There are six mandatory story moons. You need to get to eight power moons total. Right. So if you're wondering why Dangerous is going to pick up two miscellaneous moons in a few spots, that's what it is. And because it's only two, we need them to, to be two very fast power moons. Exactly. And this section right here is oh. probably 
Like, it's a showcase of the best movement Mario Odyssey has to offer, but it is also exceptionally difficult. Starting off with that quick little dive back onto the shards, grabbing another shard with a roll, with a roll cancel, bouncing straight up onto the roof, grabbing two shards in the process. But it's not over yet. This movement is incredibly difficult. Oh, oh, I just missed. So yeah, what was supposed to happen there is the bird was supposed to hit the bomb for him, and then he would use Cappy to I'm grab the shard. <laughs> but danger. that is still incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an incredibly complicated strat with where you lay Cappy there, trying to, like, bait the Pokio in the right spot in order to break open that yeah. net. But everything, the four shards building after that was textbook beautiful stuff from Dangers. And well backed up. We got bombed on as well, but that was, that was yeah. That's fine. You got to get back to the game a little bit. That's right. And now we're gonna go for another Dram strat right here. Again, laying out Cappy, and then making our way up to this moon, and then la allowing Cappy to be close enough to snap onto it. Right here. And bring him back. <laughs> snap back to reality. Some would say there goes gravity. Anyways, we don't potentially want to, we don't want to get DMC. <laughs> right, we right, have yeah. two boss fights right here with Harriet and Top. Yeah, Harriet. Uh, there's a very funny looking new strat here. Uh, I'll, I'll let it speak for itself, honestly. <laughs> Floating bomb. <laughs> Floating bomb. <laughs> so that bomb is. Oh, and Harriet is oh, running no. away. Come back, please. <laughs> So we're gonna let the bomb just float there for a second, but then we can hit it into her yep. to get the second hit oh, right away. Oh, beautiful. The absolute slam dunk on her afterwards. Right here, you lose a little first person to line this up, throw out Cappy, and then immediately hit that back into her. Very nicely done. And that's Harriet. We just gotta do Topper. Now Topper has way more hats than before. Uh-huh, my but man went to the hat store. Yeah, he got a couple of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love how you just juggle them on the first one. Uh -huh. Throwing out Cappy there, as soon as you knock out two quick ones in a row, you can do that. If you time your jump perfectly, you can cancel him out of his attack. And then doing just one right there on a little micro-optimization to knock him down. Topper's in, out, get it, got it good. He's done for it. And we can move on to the ending part of Bowser's Kingdom. So in total, you're supposed to fight the, the Brutals. Very nicely done. You're supposed to fight the Brutals each two times, theoretically, in like the main story. So eight total fights. Dangerous does three of them because he is hard forced to have to do them. All the others have been cut from the run. Right. Yeah, which is incredible because, again, like, if you watch the run from, what, five years ago now? Is it five yeah, years? Five, five years. Like five and a half. We, yeah. Like we were still doing like almost more than half of them, I think. Yeah. So now, one of the last big series of movements, this unbelievable climb from Dangers right here. Gonna have to pick up one more Power Moon just out in the open. We're gonna make our way around here, knock out these crates, and then he's gonna try to go for a strat right here where he has some momentum coming out. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instead, he's gonna have to do something almost harder and do some blind movement right here where the camera is locked in place for a while to just skip out on all this Pokio movement. But now we are gonna use the Pokio, the little Tweety Bird right here with the long nose. And utilizing a series of shakes and just regular jumps up with the controller, he's able to make it up this entire climb, catching all these cycles perfectly. Little micro adjustments, immediately date capture like he's Yoshi and make our way up to one of the biggest boss battles. Well, not the biggest boss battle in the run. We got Mecha Brutal. And you know what, Ganon, I'm gonna let you describe oh, okay. how this fight goes. All right, so right off the bat, we are going to be climbing up the right side of the leg here uh, to reach the Rango Bubble. That movement is incredibly hard, but he made it look very easy. <laughs> then going to be getting on top here to hopefully dive straight onto the topper bubble. Oh. Very nice. Another tiny optimization over what used to be done. And now after you get two of the bubbles gone, after half of it's done, you do have a little auto-scroller phase here where you're basically just standing on top of mech, waiting for the end, but after the mech runs into the wall here the second time, he is going to be setting up for the third hit, spinning in place, hoping to hit Harriet as soon as she's available, immediate, and there is a new strat here as well, where he does a spin pound and a grab pound in a very specific spot, dives straight onto the bubble and oh. gets it. Very nice. Absolutely you, beautiful. You cooked, you cooked so hard. <laughs> I'm cooking up a storm out here. Yeah. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. <laughs>
Yeah. Woo! Chef. Oh, chef. 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 All right. That means one more kingdom. All right. One final kingdom to go. You thought that was the final battle. Woo! And those are our that was final really good. That was 124. That was a great final one. You know, you know, round of applause for yourself. 124 power moons bred from start to finish. <laughs> I always love these GDQ Super Mario Odyssey runs because yeah. the audience is always piped up for them. And that's, it's just it's always such a pleasure to see. Absolutely. I want to say so is our team at home. We have $10 from Peroxide who says, Hey, Dangers, absolutely loved this run. And I'm so elated to see you on the GDQ main stage. <laughs> so proud to be your brother, especially right now in this moment. Love you, Birdie. Bring this run home. Thank you, Peroxide. Woo! Woo! Yeah, we actually have to, if you want to rattle off like two or three more donations, this is actually the longest cutscene in the run is getting up to Moon. That's right. You got it. We have $10 from Duckable who says, love this community and the game. Best of luck to the bird extraordinaire. Let's get those moons. We also have $100 from Radicoon who says, good job, Chef Bra RD. <laughs> <laughs> We have $250 from Razorn who says, so hyped for the Super Mario Odyssey run. Best of luck, dangers. Trailblaze through those moons. Donation goes to Paper Mario Glitch Exhibition, yeah. which is now at $9,500 out of the needed $20,000, rapidly approaching that halfway mark. Thank you, everyone. Eat a Frida. So many Frida. <laughs> so many Frida. So many Frida. I love both Cappy speak in this game and the new Donkeyans. Yeah. All right, Bring, yeah. bringing back those vectors from the beginning of the game, except this time we're Mario on the moon. Woo! Go pretty far with this low of gravity combined with that vector movement. So now he's going to try to perfectly time a roll right here to carry it onto this next platform. Well done. And now use these amazing rocket flowers. I wish they were in more places in the game. Throwing in some vectoring right here to gain, gain even more speed. Still having that rocket flower to make our way around to one of the very first skips that was found in Super Mario Odyssey, the Moon Cave skip. There's supposed to be an entire final dungeon. And Dangerous is going for an even more aggressive version of it. Oh, He's fine. oh, let's go, let's the big go. saves. We'll take nice it. save, man. <laughs> Thank you. That was all planned. All planned. Yeah, yeah calculated. <laughs> there is a much more beginner-friendly version of that where you skip, where you jump off of the left wall. Instead, he keeps a straighter line going up, saving himself about a second and a half. That was beautiful stuff there by Dangerous. And now we have the second and final battle with Bowser. This one I find arguably a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. I love this move right here, where he's going to capture the hat and then roll with it, carrying it all the way up to Bowser and catching him before he jumps away. Nice little cycle skip. Good six seconds there, too. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, because ideally what Dangerous wants to do... Hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Father. <laughs> all right. And then, yeah, this little fire phase in between, very, like, intimidating, but... Um, it's just kind of, you know, a preliminary phase for you to just get back into Bowser's face here. And what Dangerous is doing there is timing a back flip perfectly to land just on the inner above part of the hat to capture it immediately. If he catches it too close to Bowser, if he, throws, if he hits it too soon, it'll just get knocked back onto Bowser. If he does it too late, then the hat will fall to the side. So it's imperative that he times that perfectly. Not quite as intimidating as you would think. Yeah. And now going to utilize a damage boost right here, setting up for the last one. Beautifully just, timed on both of those. That's just so the hats don't mess with you when you're trying to do your backflip. Yeah. Right. It's going to give you one more fake out, and then that is Bowser done. We have one sequence left in the run. Well done, fight. One sequence left in the run. We are going to be capturing our good friend, Mr. Bowser, and trying to get spoilers. You're getting a spoiler one second. We're going to be trying to get to the end of the run, but there is one more major skip to go for. Ganon, explain it for us. All right, so coming up, there is a massive 2D section uh, near the end of the run. You know, it's pretty cool. Casually, you go in, you turn into 2D Bowser, but it is actually possible to entirely skip that. Basically, it the, uh, the whole section is made up of sections <laughs> and they fall apart like they break apart and they fall down and it's possible to stand on the seams 
of where they break off. So we'll see how it goes. This is one of the hardest tricks in the run. And it's right at the end. All right. There's just little pixels he can stand on. Which I'm trying to find. Oh, hit my head. Oh, okay. That second jump is the hardest one by a lot. Oh. 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 Oh, oh so close. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm just right. going to take it. Yeah, that's okay. running a little bit behind, but the, you can understand the idea there. You're trying to climb up um, the side, and you can, you can yeah. just kind of land on the corners like that um, and get all the way up the top of the yeah. kingdom. So. Oh, I, Wally's also just casually doing these little yeah. wraparound strats in 2D mode. Yeah, Those I, are very scary. I kind of locked up when I was trying to explain that, but I can't overstate how hard that trick is well. It's is so well. That's like probably the hardest trick in the run. It's so stupid. And now <laughs> we've got the final room. We have got to knock down these pillars. You got to hit each of the four of them five times to knock them down. He ideally wants to completely blow up this front right one first right. with long range fireballs. A lot of people don't even know you can use fireballs as Bowser, but we're doing it. He's making sure to turn the camera to make sure they're all going to hit manipulating nice. where they're going to angle. Already knocked down. That was a super clean first pillar. And as he gets up, he's then going to switch to the Bowser Claw Swipes to more rapidly knock them down. One slap right there. He's got five hits left. He's going to try to stall himself out here in just a second after hitting a few more. Hopefully, he doesn't get sniped by any rocks. Very that nice. is beautifully done. And now we're on to the final platform. Get ready on time. This man is pressing Y as rapidly as he can. And time is going to end as soon as Bowser shoots out of this final wire right here. Three, two, one, time. time. Woo! 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 Awesome stuff, Dangers. That was incredible. It was a fun one. I was happy that we got to do some of the new stuff. Happy yes. to kind of show off some of the, the really interesting optimizations it's funny that those were the ones that i got and some of the some of the ones that we've been doing forever um you know uh like i said this is my first time up on the stage it's been an absolute pleasure i just want to give a shout out to uh my community for showing up all the donations that are rolling in like uh i wouldn't be here i wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for you guys so thank you so much that goes to friends and family as well uh shout outs to the two commentators behind me i can think of no better people to have behind me on the couch right now well, I could, but they can't be all be. Whoa! Here, so. Whoa! Okay, Whoa! Listen. <laughs> listen. I love uh, you. I love you. Well, yes, chef. But they yes, all chef. can't be here. You know, yes, if I could have a million people behind me on the couch, you know I would. Yep, but, yep, yep. Um, uh, it really is an honor to be able to play this game. Uh, I showcase it on my channel all the time. So uh, if you like Super Mario Odyssey speedrunning, this is genuinely one of the best speed games to get into. I think it's the easiest, yes. one of the easiest to, to learn, one of the most difficult to master. There's so much resources out there, and the community really is unwelcoming um, and just a really friendly place to get into speedrunning. If you don't have a first game, let this one be your first game. That, I, that's all I really got to say about it. Uh, shout outs to the, the donations that rolled in too to get, to get us cooking. We were cooking. Let's go. We were cooking. Um, and we're only about halfway through GDQ. I'm super excited for the rest of this event, and I hope you guys are too. So stick around, stay tuned, and keep getting those incentives in. Thank you so much. Woo! Let's Woo! go, Dangers! Thank you again for that absolutely fantastic run of Super Mario Odyssey. Can we get one more round of applause for Chef Dangers and the couch? I think I can wrap everything up with $500 from Anonymous, who says, let's -a go. <laughs> let's -a go, indeed. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for that. We are going to take a quick break, but we'll be back before you know it with more speedrunning action. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone, to Summer Games Done Quick 2023, powered by Twitch. We're raising money for Doctors Without Borders from the generous donations of viewers like you, including $200 from the meat who says, yes, chef. Thank you, chef. Well, thank you so much, chef. With that, I'm going to be wrapping things up here. We'll be continuing the marathon shortly. But the next thing on our list is the Red Bull Daily Recap. Please join me in welcoming our interview crew.